All right, this is No Excuses with Michael DeLeonardo. I'm your host, RJ Roger. What's I going to say next? <laughs> Who's the guy sitting on the other side of the screen? Michael, how you doing? Now, <laughs> uh, I can't bring you a drink today. I know. <laughs> that worked last time, though. <laughs> that was fun. A lot of good feedback from that. People liked it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we like to be playful. I like I like to be playful, and so do you. So that's that's nice. Yeah, it was fun. Had a good time coming out to visit you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. I appreciate all the hospitality too. So yeah, I got there. You see your thing in the back. Oh, you can't see it. Hang on. Yeah, it's in the uh, way. Oh, what is it? Oh, yeah, that's that bottle. Oh, that yeah. bottle. You know that? You you got that bottle inherited. I'm not opening that one. Okay, that's a good. That's a classic. That's you got good. me to open the other one. I'm not opening that one. That's going to be like that. You showed me two bottles of uh, that John Gotti gave you. Yes, very nice. So I can attest on our very first show we did on Black Hand Print, where Michael appeared, he said, was that, was that the bottle he gave you on Christmas Eve night? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you said... Uh, he told you to take it, you know, you took them and you got two bottles. And I, so when I got to Michael to meet up with Michael, I said, Hey, where are those bottles at? I want to see them. And he broke them right out. I got a picture with it. You know what? When you're watching, I'll make that picture appear in this video <laughs> of me holding the bottles. Right. <laughs> photo, that's right. Yeah. I took a photo. Yeah. Jackie D'Amico. Jackie knows D'Amico. Um, guys, we're going to talk about Jackie knows today. Um, so Jackie goes back a long way, all the way out, all the way back to the Anastasia days. Um, he was in that first wave of uh, guys that were made when the books finally opened back up. He was with the oldest crew in the country. Michael's grandfather, at some point, I believe, was a captain of that crew that um, goes all the way back to the teens, right, Michael? Oh yeah, yeah. That Garofala crew, that Brook, that old Brooklyn crew, has been there for a long time. Well, it was a Manhattan crew, really. Manhattan crew. Oh, Manhattan crew. Okay. Yeah. Manhattan crew. Um, but they've been around for a long time. Jackie was in that crew. Um, Lilo Garofala. Sure. Okay, yeah. Um, so Jackie D'Amico is, you know, it's not a lot known about Jackie. You know, we don't really know what his legacy is, what his contribution was, what he meant to the up to Costa Nostra, if so we could say it that way. So, Michael, Jackie, let me ask you, how did he even get in? What brought him in? Like, you know, everyone has that first introduction. Was he, does he have any lineage? Did he meet somebody? Did he become friends with somebody? Like, how did Jackie even become involved with the mob? Well, Jack has no lineage. His uh, father, I believe, was an electrician, legit guy, uh, lived down there. And uh, with with the friends he made, Wall Street guys, uh, a lot of the guys wind up in uh, Joe Gallo's crew, later on Piney's crew, and uh, Jack of the Actors. After that, they were all in the same crew, uh, Charlie Dungana's crew. And then uh, there was Mr. Lilo and uh, Dequella before that. And uh, they were all friendly. This was that, that First Avenue, Second Avenue, 11, East 11th, East 12th Street, that area. The Roberts Cafe was probably the hub of where all these guys hung out. There was focaccerias around there. The Melly's father had a focacceria down there. It was a real stronghold of these old Sicilian-type crews uh, that stayed together. And Jackie gravitated to those guys, and uh, he wound up uh, uh, an out crew. I was, again, an out crew. I, was, I wasn't even around then. Uh, but that, that's where he wound up, and... Uh, Mr. Lilo loved him. Mr. Lilo was a gentleman, a quiet man. And Jackie was Jackie was a piece of bread with him. Uh, Lilo loved him, and he loved Mr. Lilo. Was Lilo... So, like, you often talk about, like, Jerry Dogwilla and um, one other guy. Um, Paulie Zach. Paulie Zach. I'm going to tip my tongue. And they were, like, your... They kind of molded you, guided you, taught you. Is that kind of, was that Jackie's, the guy that kind of 
represented that to Jackie or was there somebody else that was like his like primary mentor or was Lilo the guy that really molded Jackie, guided Jackie? I, I'm more than likely, I don't can't say for sure, but more than likely it was Lilo because he came up more with that demeanor. Jackie was a fun loving look, Lilo was an old timer, very quiet. Jackie was a more bigger personality, but he had Lilo's uh, uh, way of going about business. Nice and quiet. He didn't get excited. He wasn't that type of guy. He wasn't a screamer. He was he, Jackie. Just wanted to smile and have a good time and do his job as as a you know as a good soldier. It's not a whole lot even known about. It's not a whole lot out there about Lilo. That's the some of the shame of the of the whole thing. Some of these old time guys you don't know much about them. But you met Lilo, but well, you did. I know you met him. I read about it. But was Lilo? Would he have been one of the bigger captains in the family, one of the more ranking captains? I hate using the word powerful. I know you don't really like it measured that way. But what was Lilo's kind of – he would he would have been under – so he would have go back to probably Mangano, right, Lilo? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's a real old time. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, without that. Uh, it's, it's you know, that, that power thing. You know, the power thing, I, I think, is defined by several things. One is if you had a murderous crew. And the other one is your proximity to the boss. That's what that's what I think is determines and in, in, in the speak of more powerful. Hi, funny story. One time the Post put out an article, the Post of the Daily News, and they said Jackie D'Amico, super capo. And I remember we went to go get the paper. And he says, "Yeah, what? Well, I got a fucking cape. I make me a fucking super capo." Like he didn't play himself. You know what I mean? And that was like Mr. Lilo's role. And Mr. Lilo wasn't a like I said, a gregarious, outspoken, loud guy. He wasn't a carouser, stay out all night, uh, never in the drug business. I don't even know if he ever got arrested, to tell you the truth. He might have been wow. one had a tremendous run. We could find out. Well, there's the mob archaeologist guys. Yeah. I'll get Angelo, and uh, maybe we could run a rap sheet on him. Because I don't remember him ever talking about uh, Mr. Lito getting arrested. Uh, he was an under-the-radar guy. Had a voice. He was a captain, of course, you know, and, uh, you know, a Sicilian, you know, and uh, born in the Sicilian mold. And um, Jack had his own way. Jack had a uh, more uh, modern mentality. Jack had more of a mentality for my days, a younger mentality. I'll tell you what a nice guy Jack was. As he was getting older, I don't know how many years, he's probably 86 now. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 68. So the difference in the years there, uh, Jackie would play down to our age. He was just a young, fun-loving guy in his mind. And the age was no factor in how he looked at me or I looked at him because it was like we were on the same plane, even though we became a captain and went, you know, after a while. Uh, yeah. Jackie never played that shit with me, um, really. You know, he was just, uh, like I said, a regular guy. And um, it... it it sort of when he became a captain, sort of hurt him a little bit with the other captains because he didn't fall into that big, powerful money guy or that big murderous crew guy. He was just John's guy, you know. And um, growing up in the street, he was very friendly, like I said, with uh, Jackie Giordano's crew. There were several guys, and he was very friendly Frankie the Hat, uh, Tommy Bruno, guys that really people never even talk about. But they were very good friends with Jackie. Jackie liked to go out, he liked to drink, liked to smoke, cigarettes, liked to dance. That was John's guy to get go out there and start dancing. Um, I, you know, I, Jackie, who wouldn't want to be with Jackie? It would be the best captain you could ever have. There was no pressure. And don't forget, Jackie had a ton of pressure when he became a captain under John. Before that, Jackie uh, had some jewelry business down the Bowery. Had a lot of friends on 47th Street in the jewelry business. Uh, he actually worked there. He wasn't a guy who stood on the corner looking for somebody to bring a memo of sip and espresso. Not that that was a bad thing. A lot of guys did that. And that's part of the role, I guess. You know, you could sit back. But Jackie hustled. And, uh, you know, it's one of the things he did, among other things, to earn a living back then. He wasn't ashamed of that. And there was no reason to be ashamed of it. So uh, Jackie had the parts of crap games, after hours in Manhattan, high-end crap games uh, in Manhattan. 
So we had pieces of those games. Jackie liked to gamble. That hurt Jackie, like myself and like John and Paulie Zach. We had that little gambling bug uh, that hurt us at, at, at times in our lives. So, um, but that's what made Jackie part of being fun. And he laughed all the time. You think I smile all the time? This guy was always smiling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was he one of those guys like we talked about this before with um as, as far as john you know how we how john said you know all i want is a good tuna sandwich just a simple guy if he had enough in his pocket then do what he wanted to do buy a nice suit place a big bet on a game and eat a good meal that's about what john wanted out of it with his money right for the most part money yeah but it, yeah. John, john's thing was i want to be the boss i became the boss i am the boss and uh, everything else is, is part of what we talked about. You can see John's personality on those tapes. Um, he didn't have no business acumen. And he wasn't interested in that and admits to it himself. So he just wanted to delegate on, on, on everything he did. I trust you. You go out there and bring it. No matter what. We're not talking about one particular person here. Talk about anybody. Anyway, he had, he had 25 captains. So some were in jail, but the you know, ones in the street, you know, you know, our family, the captains, our family, most of them were very rich, very well off. Take a guy like Joe Corey, they own buildings, not little, not little properties, in buildings in Manhattan, probably worth a hundred million, maybe 150 million. Who knows how much he was worth? Look at Joe Curry was like Mr. Lilo, nice and quiet guy. You can look up to respect. If you like that type of guy, if you like that old timer under the radar, very quiet uh, type type man. So we had a lot of guys. And Jackie, when he became a captain, like John went to be boss, broke. <laughs> Jackie became a captain in debt. You know? Yeah. So that's, but was Jackie kind of like John in that sense where he didn't care about having a big house or a big mansion? He, 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 was he a simple needs guy also? Is that how he was? Yeah. Jackie always used to say, I want a candy apple red Jaguar. That was like, you know, hearing it from a guy that was, you know, captain uh, close to John. You know, his, his thing was he would have been happy with that Jaguar, which he finally got. He did get one. He, I, I knew yeah. that. Yeah. Candy, candy apple red Jaguar. Oh, uh, it, it was red also? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he, wow, okay. he, he wanted after a while. Yeah, he deserved it. Um, um, so how, where did John and Jackie make this connection and become together? Like, were they, did they meet at a young age, older age? Like, when did they meet and become so, how did they become so close? And how long do they go back? <clears throat> I, let me give you a little history about Jack and myself then. Okay. Uh, when I was an associate and I was starting to be brought around into the into the crew, into Lilo's crew with uh, Jerry, Pauly, Zach, Nicky Martino, Lou Salika, uh, Philly Millie, Angelo Millie, who was in jail, uh, and a whole bunch of other people, guys that were in that crew. Um, we would go out to eat. Chip Paul says, come on, we're going to go out to eat and meet everybody. One of the guys was Jackie. And Jackie had a lot to do with restaurants. He had a good friend of his. Really nice guy. I like uh, Carlo Vacarezza. Uh, he had the restaurant with, with John, Jackie, and some other investors there that they opened up, Denoy in Manhattan, later on. Uh, and Jackie would hang out with Carlo and, the, and these other guys I told, I spoke about earlier. And they would go out party and everything, hang around. Is that Carlo? Carlo, Carlo Vacarezza. Oh, I was going to say. Hold on. Okay. I okay. ever talked to him. I'll talk about him, but he's a real good guy. He was, he, John liked him. Uh, he had the restaurant. He, he, another guy was gambling with John. Uh, caused a little bump here and there. But he was very close with Jack. And they got they were they talked to each other like brothers. They didn't talk, you know, they didn't talk like Jackie was a wise guy or Jackie was a skipper. Because they knew each other that far back. I think one of the places they hung out was the English pub, Rusty Stobbs, the baseball player. I'm not going to rust off right now. So anyway, we, we would go to a restaurant of Jackie's choice. He was a classy guy. He picked nice restaurants. He did the right thing. We would go there, and uh, everybody chip in for the check, or Jackie would pick up the check at that time. And that's how I got to know Jack. Um, so as things unfolded, I got a little more friendly with Jack. I would go see him uh, down the Bowery. There was some 
guys that was with Shylock of money back and forth. I was passing money back and forth to Jackie and uh, somebody else. Uh, story I'll leave out. Uh, it didn't turn out well. So I'll leave that one out. Anyway, guys, I'm getting friendly with Jack. And my name is Proposed. He knows they're bringing me around. I'm Proposed. So I'm being treated by everybody else like I'm already made in my crew. There's no the kid or whatever, you know, like go get the water. It wasn't happening. It was just I was treated as a friend at that time. Again, everybody, everybody in the crew knew my, my grandfather. They were all older. They knew my grandfather, you know. So uh, Jackie and I started to be a little friendly at that time because I seen there's this young, younger mentality. I come up to the, uh, you know, come up to the gambling places. If you want to go up, you gamble, you have some drinks, you know, that sort of thing. It was very open to bring open arms with me, like he was with everybody. That was just Jack. So um, I opened up a fruit store in uh, 1985 on 127th Street and 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. And Jackie would travel from uh, New Jersey, or when he stayed in Manhattan, would come up by my fruit store. And he would hang around. And uh, we would just go to lunch and uh, smooth. We'd sit around talking. And... Uh, we started getting real close, you know, through these years going up. Um, so what happens is when uh, Mr. Leal gets really sick, he starts to get into incapacitated. Um, they're trying to figure out, this, and this Paul gets killed already. This is now 85, uh, December 85, when Paul gets killed. And uh, they're trying to figure out who could be the skipper there. And Paulie Zach had issues. Frankie DeChico says, come on, let's go for a walk. And he's telling me about, and I'm not a wise guy yet. Uh, and he says, Paulie, Paulie Zach owes a lot of money out. I, I don't know, a million, two million, who knows how much he owed. And he says, this guy over here won't stop gambling. He won't stop doing this. He's always in trouble. A million dollars? Oh, easily, easily he owed out a million dollars. I can give you a couple of people he owed 80s and 90s and 50s and 60s and hundreds to. I can just I can write off a list of guys, but I won't. Uh, but he owed a lot of money, gambled a long time. I mean, Paulie was a very bad gambler. Uh, that's what ruined him. And this is what ruins him from being a that's what stopped him from being a captain back. Way back. He used to drive Carl around at one time. Carl Gambino, Paul. And Jimmy Brown took the job after a while uh, of driving Carl around. But Paulie Zach was one of his drivers at one time, way back. Paul's, Paul goes right back. You know, so Frankie says, what am I going to do with this guy? If somebody comes out and we make him a captain and somebody comes out with a beef, how's he going to sit down with somebody if he owes that family X amount of money to wise guy? We've got to pay it. we got to pay all his debts. So they, they were scratching their heads because Lila didn't die yet. He was just that he was incapacitated and wanted to put a new skipper in there in, in, until he died. You know, so then there was a another incident with another guy in the crew and um, he was uh, being passed over. It would have went to him, but he was being passed over. Uh, he had a daughter that was married and she was going out with a guy that was around. I don't, I don't want to say the name because I like the guy and I don't want to put that out there, but he was going around with going out with her. Well, well he was married. She wasn't married. Excuse me. He was married. And uh, John really got angry when he found out about it, that this guy didn't do nothing. Except the guy had to get divorced and marry this girl. It was like a comma in La Medosa scene. So being he never really acted, did anything, got that mad or whatever John expected out of him, it knocked him off the list of being the next captain. So Jackie knows. Used to hang out with Joe Butch a lot on Mulberry Street. Jackie's from that area. They were very, very good friends. Joe Butch now is talking to John about making Jackie a skipper. Brings Jackie around a little bit more to John because there wasn't that relationship with John. They knew each other, but they were not friendly. They were not going out. They were not gambling together. They were they weren't doing nothing together. Zero. So hello and goodbye whenever they've seen each other. And in the proximity with John going to the Raven Eye and all that whole area and Jackie being on Mulberry Street, they've they seen each other a little more often, but didn't hang out. 
There was no such relationship. So Joe Butch convinces John to make him the skipper. And Jack, that's how Jackie gets the crew. So after some time, I'll, let me finish up on this. I know you got a question for me. Mm -hmm. So after some time, Jackie would meet Joe Butch by Taramina. That was Joe Butch's restaurant on Mulberry Street. And they would walk up together to Ravenite. So Mr. Leo dies, Jackie gets the crew. I don't want to skip that step. He dies, Jackie gets the crew. He's a captain. Uh, Lilo died, I believe, in the fall of 86, somewhere around there. Yeah, fall of 86, I believe. Uh, now, months are going by, and Jackie's walking up the block with Joe Butch, meeting him. And one John must have, one day John must have had his balls twisted. And he says in front of everybody, who's this? Skipper with a skipper, captain with a captain. In other words, you waiting for Joe Butch to walk up the block? I just made you captain. You can't hear on your own. You're not with him, you're with me. That's John again. <laughs> but he gave him, he gave him a <laughs> shot. A skipper with a skipper. Now, speaking with Joe Butch, right? Now, Joe Butch is a whole other subject. Joe Butch is a staunch Sicilian. His father was a, was a captain. Yeah, who knows how far Joe Butch's grandfather goes back to Sicily as friends, just like my, my family, you know? So Jackie got the message. Joe Butch got the message. And uh, Jackie would show up on his own. And from then on, they Jackie and John, Jack, John started to learn Jackie a little bit, his personality a little bit more. They interacted. John loved him at this time because Jackie was that fun-loving guy. He was no threat. Jackie's crew was no threat to John. Jackie's not a killer. He's not a murderer. He's not a plotter. He's not a schemer. He's never had any, what they call a dirty ass uh, in the street when you have a little luggage and you're a little sneaky. He didn't have those ways. Even though Jack, uh, Jackie's a Sicilian. Well, they say Sicilians are sneaky, right? We're all sneaky. So uh, Jackie didn't have those ways at all. And uh, that's why they gravitate at that point in the beginning to get really, really close. <clears throat> Jackie gets made a captain by John on the endorsement of Joe Corey, you said, right? Oh, Joe Butch. Correct. Joe, oh, Joe Butch. Now, with Jackie, he wasn't a big earner. No? He wasn't a super tough guy killer Correct. guy. Um, is that, isn't that typical? Typically you would be contribute some great value to the family. Maybe you want to like with kind of with Sammy, he got up after he went on a war, you know, or helped John with a big thing, or you're a big, big earner. You know how to make a lot of money. You know how to build rackets, you know, build things up. But isn't it usually something that you have that is of great value to the family before they will put you in that type of position? So how does Jackie, what does Jackie have that will put him as a captain, especially of that that, that type of crew? Well, your, your key word there was usually, which you're right. You're 100% correct. But look what I how I just broke it down. Zach eliminated... This other guy eliminated Jackie. The rest of the crew were cripples. There was only one guy with a lot of money there. Joe Cosabano, the funeral parlor guy. I forgot him in the crew too. Whose father, his father goes back to Sicily too. He was a funeral pop. He was up in age. But everybody else in that crew was less off than Jackie as far as money and influence and everything else. Jackie got that by default because there was nobody else capable unless they put another uh, soldier in that crew to be a captain, which I don't think John would have ever did that. I think he wanted to keep it in, wait, not think he did it. He kept it in house within our own crew, promoted somebody up again. Jackie was a young guy. He was, a, you know, for the time he had energy, uh, but he was no asset in that respect. He was, he got the chair to be the captain. And, and you know what? You got to give John credit for that. He could have put somebody else there. He could have took somebody from another crew, put somebody there, take that crew over. It's been done before. Is a captain's role essentially 
I mean, if a crew's broke, it's not making no money, it's not turning anything in, is that captain looked like a failed captain? You're not doing your job. Shouldn't a captain build a crew up? Like, how does it, I mean, you tell me from the inside of how that works. Well, yes, of course. That's why he gets me, right? Comes in, they got Fat Dom. Uh, then later on, uh, when all things change, you know, my brother Frankie, little Joey, we start, you know, I wind up with these guys. Well, you, you build from the youth. The older guys were shot as far as money. I got some funny stories about, I'll give you a funny story. You ready? I'm ready. All right. A guy named Philly Mealy. He had a brother, Angelo Mealy. And uh, their family goes way back. And uh, when John had everybody going to every wake, every wedding, every everything, every party that we had to attend, all the crews had to show up. So now we would chip in $500 to give to a wedding or give to a wake. And that would be our, our gift to wherever we were going. Right? Our crew was so broke. <laughs> Nobody wanted to give anything. Now Philly, Philly comes. He's it's, it's funny. Yeah, Philly was a funny guy too. But he's a regular working guy. He drove a school bus. This is a wise guy driving a school bus for the city or a private private company. But it was for the city. The school children driving a school bus. That said, the guy had no money. You know, he wasn't earning. He wasn't doing anything. And he's an older man. He's not a kid. His brother's in jail doing like 25 years for junk dealing. So he would come with it. Jack, he says, this fucking guy comes with the same $8. He says, Jack, I only got $8. Jack, Jack, what am I going to put on? Um, RJ, every week we had something. You needed a job just for the envelopes. <laughs> there was weekends. I was going to like four different things. Wedding, wedding, two weddings in a night, a wedding, a wake, uh, another party. You know, it was just, where are you going to get the money for? I need a job just to put the envelopes. Now with a broke crew, a broke Tejina, it runs into problems. So it was humorous at the time because Jackie says, this fucking guy's going to come with the same $8, watch. And we would go laugh hysterical. <laughs> we went, it's Philly, you got, hey, you only got $8. You know, and everybody else would be sneaking, taking the money out, that $100 bill. And, and you know, it was it was burdensome. It was, was burdensome. Uh, because we did, we did go to a lot of wakes and weddings uh, in John's tenure, and everybody had to pay. And when you're a broke crew, you know it's hard. I, I give you another funny one. <laughs> I don't know if, if everybody thinks that's funny, but it was funny to me at that time. And Jackie and Jackie's personality, not get mad. We laughed it off. We laughed it off. You know, I, another way. Yeah, Philly's gonna come with that eight dollars. Watch it. Um. Jerry Dagwala, right? And he started making some money later on in his life, Sherlock, and, um, because he was broke for a big spell because of what he did, and they took him down. He didn't earn any money. He was really on the balls of his ass. Uh, and uh, he would come. So Jerry's earning a few dollars now. And uh, Jerry said, well, we got to keep going to these weddings and wakes for her. Where are we going to keep going? We got to go for this money. He's he's belly aching, right? She with Jackie, too, you know? So there's a wedding. Jackie says, We got it. This is like February or March or somewhere like that. And he says, Watch what I tell Jerry tonight. Yeah. He says, We're going to tell him we got a, wed we got a wedding in May, right? <laughs> he goes, You know, guys, he's talking. He says, Jerry, you know, we got this wedding coming up in May. He goes like this. Jack, I don't think I feel good. <laughs> you say you don't feel good for me? <laughs> and he's there with a stove. Jack, I don't think I feel good then. <laughs> so, you know, these are the kind of things you you know people don't don't hear. I mean, these are the backstories of what goes on. And all these guys, like I said, they were Jackie got it by default. Do I think Jackie deserved it in the end? Absolutely. He, he wore it proudly. He wore it well. But at that time, I'm telling you how this thing grew, you know, where Jackie came from into this. And he inherited a crippled crew, just like John called him a cripple. I mentioned a guy named Lou Salika, old, a real old timer. You can look him up. The guy was a champion fighter. You look, you look on the computer, you'll find him. Uh, so, but these guys were all old. They were all done. 
Yeah. Ah, okay. It was it was they were done and they yeah. didn't amount the, the money they should have because most of them were, were gamblers and had issues. So uh Jackie became a captain of the cripples. Didn't you tell me before he, he had like a nickname um Diner? Oh that that's later on. I gave him that name. I gave him a couple of names. Okay. <laughs> Diner was one and Christopher Columbus was the other. Yes, you did tell me that. You want to explain that? <laughs> yeah, after uh, after John goes away, um, I think it was the Gambino brothers from Brooklyn. Uh, they jumped bail, then got caught, and John gave uh, 18th Avenue and that whole area to myself and Jack to handle, and their, and their families uh, when these gentlemen were away. Uh, actually, it was just before they jumped bail that we got it because... They knew it was coming. So we, we got to handle that. And uh, when Jackie got, Jackie wasn't a Brooklyn guy. Jackie was a Manhattan guy. And the Manhattan guys thought differently. The Brooklyn guys and the Brooklyn guys thought a little differently. The Manhattan guys, it was a, not a rivalry, but just a different thought pattern. And uh, Brooklyn was like the lower end, you know, compared to the guys in Manhattan. So when Jackie got to uh, 18th Avenue in Brooklyn, and I started bringing them around, showing them everything that that, that was the, those guys had, and the, the shops, the coffee shops. It was like he 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 found paradise. Yeah, and um, 18th Avenue was like burnt. It was like scorched earth. After those like, guys got finished with all the arrests and everything, it used to be a beautiful meadow one day, and one day you came with scorched earth. Everything was burnt. You know, so you know between agents being there forever, surveillance and everything that went on, uh, it wasn't new pastures. Jackie thought it was new pastures, so I used to call. He used to call this call eighty Avenue. Jack, we don't want to hang out there. Even where we got it, we'll move around. Let's go. We'll go somewhere else. Now nah, he loved eighty there because all cafes. It was. Okay. Beautiful. I mean, as far as that, you want to go have pizza, cafe, drinks, whatever. It was really nice. And I told him, on, on the sign on 18th Avenue, above it said Christopher, Christopher Colombo. It wasn't Christopher Columbus, because his name was Colombo, really, not Columbus. They changed his name in time. So I says, when I used to call my friends, I says, we're well, going to refer to Jackie as Christopher Columbus, because he used to call me, call my friends, call, where's Michael, where's this one? That? So uh, if we had a talk, I, if I had to meet my friend Tommy or somebody, I'd say, listen, I can't meet you. I got to go see Christopher Columbus. Because I, I set up my own calls, like Nazabik or Paul. I had a lot of names from different people. That it was only my own code with my own guys that if it got caught on tape, you know, I wasn't going to say, I'm going to see Spiro. I would say, I'm going to see the caveman. <laughs> you know, I had, I, like I said, I made up names for everybody. And just my guys knew who I was referencing. So Jackie became Christopher Columbus. So after he got the hit with 18th Avenue running around and all the nonsense, he started hanging out in diners. This one diner, this one diner. And after a while, we changed his name to Diner. Where is he? He's in a diner. What do you mean he's in a diner? <laughs> so, you know, uh, that was Jackie. You know, he would go grab that, gather, call all my friends, call everybody you knew, and everybody had to meet at the diner. Or everybody had to meet this cafe. It was one big party for Jackie. That's what he was a group guy. He liked hanging around with guys. He loved hanging around with young guys. He was always laughing, telling stories. And uh, like I said, Jack didn't play captain. He came down. That was just like everybody else. Yeah, there's guys that I talked to, <clears throat> excuse me, in our comment section who talk about Jackie. People who would say, Yeah, I was at this certain place and I just recognized them and said, Hey, are you Jackie? You Jackie D'Amico, you Jackie knows, or whatever. I don't know what they dressed him as, but and he would he said he would just sit there. He was like, come on in. And he said, there was one guy, I won't say his name, but he's a pretty popular commenter. But when he hears this, he'll know I'm talking about him. He said he just looked over and saw them and recognized them. And they sat and they talked for like two or three hours, having drinks and everything. Just not about mob stuff, not nothing like just talking, just conversational, talking about just life, he said. He said, I just couldn't believe this guy just said, oh, sit down, have a seat. Just, you know, and just talk to him all night long. <laughs> yeah, I used to kid around. I said, see, Jackie over there, if there was nobody here, he'd be talking to that tree. 
<laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of what I hear about the guy. Some different yeah, people. Well, but it's it, it's it's not a condescending remark. It's just yeah, he liked to have a good time. Yeah, you know, it didn't work out to his uh, favor in the beginning uh, because there was a lot of a lot of the captains there that were uh, critical of Jack. And uh, you could just see it. And they didn't res- some of them didn't respect Jack as a captain. The other captains, some of the other captains. And Jackie would get into it a couple of times and uh, Jackie would take a, a lesser position with them and not be as aggressive. And uh, there was several times I told Jack, why don't you go pull this guy to the side? Tell him to go fuck himself. You know? And uh, Jackie wasn't that type. He was, and, and he changed. He got he got much stronger later on because he was just learning that position and learning the people in there. That's what kind of guy he was. He wasn't a he wasn't a confrontational type guy, so he took a lesser position. Uh, it got to a point, and Jackie don't know this story. Nobody knows the story. Maybe John Junior, maybe Senior told John Junior the story. Jackie was, when John's calling him a cripple and later on getting closer to when they get arrested, uh, people were panning Jackie. And I, what I mean by pan, they were getting under John's skin about Jackie. And this is where John falls off about how he viewed Jackie at one point, which was not good. It was like he was not doing anything. He wasn't didn't have a worth. John was full of a lot of pressure. Later on, Later on, John realized what a great friend Jackie was. And I think I articulated that in a, in a previous show. So Jack was um, getting a lot of heat, and, and, and he, he would tell Jack, hey, Jack, you're, this is in the beginning, Jack, you're telling me Bellotti. Like In other words, handle these captains for me. And Jack wasn't able to do it, and they would just run right over Jack and go right to John. Instead of him saying, hold, hold, hold it up, tell me, I'll tell the boss. I'll tell Chief. He wasn't doing that because they didn't respect him that way. He wasn't that old time captain. He didn't have the killer crew. He didn't have all the money. He didn't have, he was just Jackie. You understand? So they know they could run over him. So it came a point in time. And I, I really don't know who ticked John off about Jack. They're going out. And I'm saying at the end of the bar at the Ravenite, and John will walk out first. Remember that picture where the other guys work out first? No, John yeah. always walked out first. Let somebody want to jump out and get their picture taken first. John always got their picture taken first because he walked out first. He wasn't worried about anybody shooting him, believe me when I tell you. Um, so he's walking out the bar. I'm standing at the end. And usually he would tell Jack or Bobby Boreal or one of the other guys, tell those guys to meet me in Denoy. Tell those guys, uh, stay by, go by Joe Butcher's. I'll be back later. Oh, he would tell us where to meet. He's always wanted to have somebody around that he liked, you know, but he wouldn't say it to the whole club because he didn't want to offend a lot of people. So he'd just pick a couple of soldiers out to, to meet him somewhere. So this day I'm waiting at the bar. He says, I'm all dressed up. I figure, hey, we're going we're gonna to go out. John's going to invite us out, you know? And he's walking out and everybody like Pied Piper is following like this, like a vacuum, right? He stops by me and his nose is open. And Jackie's right behind him. And he goes, you and him, flip-flop. And they all walk out. Jackie goes, <laughs> and they all walk out, right? No message. So I talked to Jackie. I said, well, you know, when I see them next time, what was that about? He said, oh, he's fucking mad at me. He said, I don't know why. He says, he told me good, you, we may flip-flop, make me the captain and make him a soldier. Put him in my crew. So now another time, he says it again. And I got Gravano, what he says is true or not, comes and tells me, John's thinking of flipping you. Joe Watts said the same thing. And I'm hearing this, that there's a rumor. My friend Noel, whose father's a wise guy and his grandfather's a wise guy. I was going to straighten him out. He had some issues with drugs. And uh, I took him off the list. Because uh, I don't want to jeopardize his life, safety, or anything else if I straighten him out. And he's played with drugs. Great guy, great soul, great heart. Anyway, the, the restaurant bankers and brokers. Familiar to everybody? 
The union guy who got shot was over at wrecking the bankers and brokers restaurant. John was on trial for it. You remember RJ? You remember the bankers and brokers? Mm -hmm. No, O'Connor, the union guy. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This his father owned the restaurant, bankers and brokers. Okay. Well, no, it wasn't it wasn't the old one, it was the new one where, where the incident was, right? So Nola told me they may do an oldies night. Singers come in and play. Johnny Maestro, all the all, all the imitation bands, some of the good singers that that sung in the past. And uh, they were going to have it on a Thursday night. So he says, oh, we're thinking of have it. He's Michael, you think John will come? I said, he'll love it. Oh, sure, he'll come. I'll ask him, you know. So I went and I told John, you know, we're going to have uh, oldies night. Would you come? What night? Thursday night. Yeah, we're going to go. So there were several weeks that went by. We went every Thursday night. We would go to the show. And it would be whatever, whoever John invited. So... We go to we go to this one night, and uh, it's John sitting this way, looking towards the the windows of the restaurant. Uh, Joe Watts, Jackie the actor, Jackie knows, sitting next to John, me, Danny Marino, Jimmy Brown, a couple other captains there, all captains, and Bob Boreal. And um, well, everybody's talking nice and easy. And uh, Jackie said, I got to go to bathroom. Excuse me. Now, there's a chair missing between John, where Jackie was sitting, and me. He gets up, goes to the bathroom, and he goes, he leans over to me just a little bit, and he goes, May flip flop here. So I look at it. All these guys, all these eyes are looking at me. And I said, John, I'm not going to say Jackie's more loyal than anybody here. But there's nobody more loyal to Jackie than you. He went like this. Fucking silence at the table. The next Sunday, that Sunday. That Sunday, John played cards. Nobody really went there on the Sunday night. I saw taking a ride out there. Where's my kitty cat? She wants to eat. <laughs> Come on over, Fever. <laughs> it was Sunday night. I get my car and I drive out to Queens to the Bergen. And he's playing cards. Hey, Mike, what are you doing? Said, what are you doing here? Said, I came to say hello. So he's looking at me. He knows I'm there for a reason, right? I just showed up. He didn't invite me to come. Not that you have to be invited, but he usually tells you, you want, if you want to see it, you come, you know? So I says, uh, whenever you got a minute. So he plays another half hour, whatever. As I go in the back, I'm eating. I come out. He says, come on, let's go outside. He says, what's up? I says, John, I am so flattered and honored that what you would want, what you want to do for me with Jackie and the G. But I, Make me captain somewhere else if you want, but I can't do that. I, I don't put me on the spot with that. In sort of these terms, John, I love Jackie. He pinched my finger. He looked at me. And that was it. He didn't even say a word. We walked back inside. Come on, let's go back inside. Well, nobody knows that story except for maybe he told his son which I, I'm erring on the side he did. And that's why Jackie does not get taken down as a, being a captain. And the people I mentioned that were alive at that table and who he mentioned it from several times that we're going to flip-flop, no, that's a true story. And so that's, Jackie doesn't even know. Jackie's going to find out right now. Wow. You know, it's... Um, I would never tell Jackie that at that time. But Jackie would have done the same for me. If my life was on the line with something, or if I was in trouble with John for something, he would have went to bat for me. That's what you do with your skipper. You don't get, ever give up your skipper. I know if you get an order from the boss and you got to kill him, that's what happens. But if you could help out a situation, you don't give up your skipper. 
It's your father. It's the guy who puts your finger. Do you think John that raised your stock with John? Raised your stock value with John? And, you know, it was there was several things, but I think this is the one that may have turned the corner because it was in the time of those tapes. I'm not sure what the timeline was with the tapes with this conversation with him. It could have been right there. So when John pulls me away, he says, don't go there no more. Maybe I already had that talk with him. You know, uh, and maybe that's what it was about. Because remember how mad he was with me, with the wake. It was, no, it had to be after. It was definitely after. Now I'm thinking about it. It was definitely after because he was mad at me at that, at, at the wake. 100%. So it had to be shortly after that. Yeah. Now, I know you said that um, Jackie was no threat to John. John knew that. He saw that in Jackie. He's no threat. Mm -hmm. Jackie wasn't the only guy. that's no Tommy Gambino was no threat, I'm sure. Well, it, no threat in the sense of power, but threat, and, threat of the sense that um, if anything happened, you know, they would, he's a Sicilian, he's a Castellano guy, and... Uh, uh, if somebody plotted against John, would Tommy be really sad? No, no. Okay. Well, I guess what I'm what I'm saying is there was probably some. There's probably more. So John makes him a skipper, and he promotes him up, makes him a skipper. Um, John saw there's no threat, but every most of the pictures we see of John, Jackie's there. Court hearings, Jackie's there. Umbrella, Jackie. John's up here. Jackie's in the back somewhere. I think it was his driver. Picked him up every day. Every day. Okay. So Jackie, I mean, this John had, must have had something with Jackie that they were that connected them. They were had they were like minded in, in the area, or they had a common interest. So I'm asking, is, is there something like what besides promoting them up to make him a captain? What made John keep Jackie at his side? And that was kind of like his, like, you know, Batman and Robin. That was the guy who we see next to John even more than we see his underboss and concierge. We see Jackie everywhere with, with John. So was there something that they did together that they found fun having together? Was there, you know, what made them so close? And, and like you said, I didn't know this till you just said this. They weren't lifelong friends. They didn't become close until 85, it looks like. Mm -hmm. which is 86. late 86 86 so there you go so what was it is it something else that like what did they what commonality did they share together that he would want to be around them so much uh, i may have said this earlier too john could be sleeping in the passenger seat with jackie driving and not worried about jackie doing anything jackie could not be compromised by anybody jackie uh, john held that as a great quality in jack uh, did Jack go to other families at that time, sitting down, battling out beefs? No. No. John never put him out front. He had other guys to do that, the Jimmy Browns, uh, his brother, even, uh, and other, uh, Joe Watts, even though he wasn't a skipper, people listened to him. Uh, and the, Nicky Carrazzo. Nicky Carrazzo was great on beefs. He a great captain. You know, so he had those pit bulls to send out. And, and the guys that fight. Jackie was the, the good guy. He was the good liaison for something. Piss out a list. Go get lists. You know, go see this guy. It, it, he had Jackie as the good, the good captain. You know what I mean? He had him as somebody he could really trust. He was more his friend. And I'm not even going to say confidant, because I don't know how much John talked about the street business with him, and which is curious. Uh, he, again, he wanted him to be that Tommy Bellotti, get out in front, block all the questions. And uh, John got mad at him for not doing it. You know, to see him as strong enough, that's why John was torn. But he knew Jackie was the guy. If I'm going to go out, I'm taking Jackie and Joe Watts with me today. I'm going to have a good time. Uh, we're going to go to the restaurant and eat. Jackie's going to be there. We're going to laugh all night. He was his safety valve, his relief valve for John. Boats. 
Carlo had the boat, not guilty. Uh, Jackie, Carlo was with Jackie. So there was the boat, with the, they would go on the boat together. You know, uh, I was on the boat with John, John, Jackie, uh, his son, Peter, uh, Boriello, and maybe one other guy. We went on the boat together. So Jackie was always there in the fun. That, that was John's release. He was very comfortable with Jack in that role. I, 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 crazy comment. I'm stuttering right now, but I'm going to tell you why. John got mad at Jackie, blasted him one time. And he came to me the night we were talking. He goes, Michael, he's fucking so mad at me. He says, if this shit on the plate, I eat it. That's how much I love this guy. Wow. I fucking, I started even thinking about saying it. It's hard for another man to think like that. But metaphorically speaking, that's how much Jackie loved this guy. He yelled at Jackie one time. That Jack was sick and he got there late and he fucking blasted him. He told Jackie, fuck you and you and all your ancestors. <laughs> he, got, he got so bad. She was, and later on, he tells him, tells him, what's my ancestors got to do with this? <laughs> that was Jackie. John fucking blasted. She says, fuck you. I don't care what the fuck. Hell, you come here first. You come here. But John, I would say, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you and all your ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what my ancestors got to do with this? <laughs> uh, so, so I guess when you say stuff like that, at the time when John was still in the streets with Jackie, was John using Jackie for a particular task in the sense of, I, I need him because he's not a threat, he's safe, he's a liaison, or did John love Jackie? Did John appreciate Jackie? It, not in that time period. He did for a little while. When John started getting all this stress and all this pressure and everything going on, I think with all this stuff that was coming in on Jack, all bullshit beefs, whatever they were, right? Whatever the beefs were, was building up on John that he had somebody very weak as far as John liked strong guys, especially being a captain. But he he had this passion for Jackie. That's why he was always around. He wouldn't, he didn't cut the umbilical cord. He didn't tell, he didn't take him down. He almost did. Almost did. You know, so yeah, was he disenchanted with it the way he handled himself as a skipper? So, but later on, I when John goes away and John's sitting in MCC, I think John finally realizes who his friends are and the people that truly love him. And he realized it was Jack. Jack was on every visit. I don't think Jack ever missed a visit. Wow. I drove him up there most of the time. Once Jackie was in the city, it was in Brooklyn or somewhere else. I'd go get him. I'd wait outside. Cold or warm, I would be waiting outside. I think I know what your answer is going to be, but I'm going to ask it for the viewer purposes. You know, sometimes you have guys up the boss's ass because he's the boss. They laugh at his jokes. Boss makes a joke. Everybody laughs. It's the boss. You got to laugh. Um, some people act as if they're so loyal. I'm so, I love you. I, I'll, you shit on the plate. I'll eat it. You're the boss. And then some people really feel something for was Jackie being loyal to his boss or did Jackie really, truly love John Gotti? Like he loved him as a friend. Oh, he loved him. No question. To today, I, I knew if you, if Jackie ever wrote a letter or put down a memoir, and John would be the, the guy he said on the top with his with his children and his, and his wife, he'd be right on top, would be John Gotti. No question. You know, um, there are cer certain people in that life where legacy, you know, whatever their legacy might mean. Some people have something that's more important or that's perceived as more important. Um, some people, so I guess I would say for whatever legacy means in Costa Nostra, whatever it means to you, um, you know, a guy like Jackie, there's no one saying, oh, he took down a boss. He usurped the family. He took over the commission. He was the odd father, walked around, kept the police off his task, off his back by pretending he was crazy. He was... 
you know, like he was when the guy wasn't a big earner, he didn't go to war, he wasn't on the front line, he didn't take a boss cell, he didn't kill the captain and take a he didn't what does a guy like Jackie mean to that life? Does the life need more people like Jackie? And what is Jackie's legacy to the life? I would ask you. Well, respect has a lot to do with, with, with everything in that life. Just about uh, respect the fear, respect the minds, respect the money, respect the proximity to the boss. All uh, different types of respect, right? And what, what somebody deems uh, they're going to look up to you or listen to you. Fear is the biggest one, right? Jackie had none of those qualities as far as what you just articulated. Jackie had loyalty to the boss. He was John's friend. Uh, Jackie was somebody who carried the Gotti torch going forward. When you seen uh, Jackie, you knew John was, Shadow was around somewhere. When Jackie showed up, John followed. And not literally. I'm talking about when he was away or anywhere else. And something may come out of Jackie's mouth that represented John. He was a representative of our family uh, in that in that way. Uh, again, not sitting on major beefs. Uh, there's there's a whole bunch of other stories I could tell, but uh, we would be here for hours and hours uh, about Jackie. I like to just share the good ones, as best the ones that I could with him, because he deserves that. His legacy should be that of uh, someone who had made an impact on John Gotti and kept them happy at times, dancing in regimes. <laughs> I wrote one th thing down I wanted to ask you that you had mentioned. You said that, um, this would be my last question, um, that everybody knew your grandfather. Um, yeah, just about, I'm not going to say every single person, well, but going back to that generation, going back. Yeah, so when and you, you were referring to yourself and you said people knew you because they knew your grandfather. Mm -hmm. So they knew, and, you know, Jackie goes back a long way. He'd been in life a long time. Um, you come out of a long history, long lineage. Um, in that life, typically, does a person like Jackie, let's say, who goes back, served under three or four bosses maybe, um, a guy like you who comes out of, you know, your grandfather was there, your great grandfather was there. Um, does that, does that creep make other captains in the family uh, give you a little bit more respect? Should a guy like Jackie that's been there for so long, I'm not, or your answer can be no, but I guess I would ask you, should it have, should it matter if a guy has been there since Albert, Carlo, Paul, Gotti, you know, and kept going up and never betrayed nobody. He never stole nothing from nobody. He never, do, do, do the other people in that in the family look at a guy like that and say, wow, this guy survived many different bosses, many different changes of the guard, changes of power, yeah. many different problems, up and downs in the family, guys going off to jail, guys getting busted, bosses going off for life, Paul's dead, Gotti got life, you know, Albert got killed, Carlo, dies, passes the reins over, there's a little bit of a, he survives it all without doing nothing nefarious. Does that look, does, do people say, wow, I want to be like him, or, I, or I'm going to, I respect him more for having that kind of history? Yeah, there are some. I'm, I'm not going to paint that with a broad brush, because you could see uh, what people are most popular today on uh, YouTube, right? It's the sex and violence. More violence, you know. Uh, you can see what goes on in, in, uh, in the annals of history with books. It's the guy who killed the most. The guy who left that kind of mark. But it's an interesting point when you said you had plenty of those guys. You had the Joe Curies, right? You had those guys under the radar, but left an impact to me. Guys like me left that impact. I, I was a guy who understood that, and I would be willing to put that guy's, give him his hat and put his coat on. He deserved that. He, going along the way you said, he deserved that for being that long in that life. Not putting his coat on because he may chop your head off. 
You know what I mean? These are the guys that, and, and there's an innumerable amount of guys that I can name that went that path. Of least resistance, maybe, in that life. Yeah. The guys get thrust into the spotlight and into that. It's Look, Louis Molino, I blasted my way in. That's what his words were. Yeah. You know, and look what happened to Louis in the end. But it was Joe Curie. It was Jackie. You know, there is a big, big difference. But who gets remembered? Who gets remembered? Jack will be remembered because he's memorialized, as you uh, delineated earlier, about being in all these pictures with John. Otherwise, he would be a nondescript figure. Because he didn't leave that impact of violence. So, and, and, and that's the shame of that life, because that's really not what it's about or should have been about, but that's what keeps it going. Is that thought, that fear factor, uh, that people love? Uh, come on here and watch me and everybody else on here. But Jackie deserves the the, the reference. A good man, a loyal soldier. And when I say soldier, I don't care what position you are. Everybody's a soldier, even the boss. Uh, in that in, in that lifestyle, and I have very fond memories of Jack. Hey, well, listen, we bumped heads. We've had it. It's just two men. You know, uh, there's some stories, but um, my my heart uh, is fond for Jackie. You know, Jack, I only have good memories for Jack. He had a pure soul in that life. He never asked for anybody's life. As far as I know, I never even heard not even an inch that he took somebody's life. But he never asked for nobody's life either. That's admirable. Because the guy in his statue being around that long, he had to have a beef somewhere bad enough that it got that contentious that it could have been somebody could have got killed. Everybody goes just about, and I can say, I guess everybody broad brush again. It, most of the time you'll run into somebody through the lead that you really want to hurt or they really want to hurt you. Because we're criminals. We're in the street. And, you know, you could get two people and this is like a lesson I would tell my brother-in-law and some other guys. Every time they had an argument with another wise guy from another family, I like to kill this motherfucker. Why? You know, well, yeah, this motherfucker, he pushed back. He was yelling, he told me to go fuck my Well, you told me to go fuck himself, too. What are you doing? They were, him and Wild Bill had got, a, got into an argument one day. He said, he's nuts. He left, he said, I want to kill him. You ain't killing nobody. That guy's a tough guy. You're a tough guy. Two tough guys can have an argument without the remedy being kill everybody. What's the matter with you? These are, these are all tough guys in your own right. So Jackie wasn't that type of guy. I've never heard him. Yeah, he he, he, he went after some guys, you know, of course. The guy's no good. He's a snake. He's a this, he's a that. Watch that guy. He, he was part mentorship with me, with guys I didn't know, you know. And, uh, you know. Jackie, someone that I'll always remember fondly. If you could say something to Jackie, the reason I ask you this, we, we talked about Jackie before. I saw in the comment section, someone said, oh, I know somebody who knows Jackie. I'm going to send this video to him. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah? Yeah, I saw it in our comments. Someone said that. But, you know, this community is a, I see a lot of stuff like that. People who, I ain't going to say no one's name on here, but you see a lot of people who, this is the only space here on YouTube where this stuff is talked about. I mean, it's like, like, like we said before, there's food trucks that have, it's called, you can buy a sandwich called the Jackie nose. You can buy a, a sandwich called the Mikey scars, you know? So this, this little community that we have, it does mean something to people who were in that Hollywood doesn't talk about it really. Not the real names, the real guys, the real stories. This, but this thing is, is food for a lot of people. So I wouldn't be surprised if this video at some point made it to Jackie. Anything you want that you would say to Jackie? Yeah. He made an impact in my life at a certain time period. I always respect you. You're a great man. And I respect you for your loyalty to uh, John Gotti. Um, not because he's John Gotti, because he was the boss and you respected that position. And you never look for nothing, Jack. You just wanted to have a cup of coffee or a drink, smoke your cigarettes, and have a few laughs. You're a great captain, 
and I'll always remember you for that. I hope you're well and your family's well. You may say, fuck you, and I'll take that too, as long as you give me a response. Be well, brother. Guys, leave comments. Give us some feedback. If you have any Jackie knows stories you want to share, that because sometimes we learn things in the comment, leave comments. Um, so that's all we got for today. Um, not a lot of stuff out there on Jackie, so I'm glad that we made this video. Um, it's, it's very hard to find information on him, so it's nice with Michael being a guy that knows him, being an insider. You know, this is the uh, uh, the, the good thing about these stories that we put some stuff, um, leave some things behind as a matter of record. Um, one day, people, I'm a big believer. One day, this stuff's going to make it into films and books and history books, textbooks, college books, everything. And the things that get said here now are going to be what they use and, they, and what they will source in their textbooks. So I'm glad we made this. Close it out, Michael. Be well, everyone. Thank you for joining our Patreon family. Uh, it's starting to grow really well. And uh, it's tremendous comments. We'll have a live after this, RJ? Yeah, yeah. We'll let everyone come in and ask their questions. They might have some questions. I like doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, everybody keep smiling. Be well. God bless. Thank you, guys. <laughs>